Hi, it's your daily matter for January 17th. Uh, Stephanie has just pointed out to me that I passed over something in the preceding pages, which uh, is really quite significant. So let me read the line that I skipped. I said, uh, we're going to have to change our way of thinking. We have to slow down our initial reactions when we hear about some form of violence. Not by any means the same thing as losing the intensity of our feelings about the problem, but on the contrary, in order to convert those valuable feelings from fear, panic, or resentment into determination. Converting our feelings from negative to a positive, which I think is exactly what the possibility that the David's study uh, shows up and that the Rhesus and stump tail studies confirm that uh, fear and anger, which left to their own devices, are such destructive forms of energy, both in our own psychic makeup and in their effects on those around us. And there's just abundant evidence of that now scientifically, if it were not already clear, that they are ultimately forms of energy. In other words, Hate, which we, this is kind of what we've been leading up to. Hate is not primarily hate. It's primarily energy that's gotten pushed through a distorted mirror. And that's where the distorted mirror of our culture and our mass media are doing us such an extreme disservice. They are, they're carving a channel so that the energies that come up in our psyche tend to run in those separative, destructive uh, directions. And uh, you may remember one of the quotes from Mahatma Gandhi that we've thought is so important and was used in the Daily Meta last year, of course. That is that I have learned through bitter experience the one supreme lesson to conserve my anger. And just as steam conserved can be turned into power, so anger conserved can be turned into an energy that can change the world. So we've been seeing glimpses of that in the discussions that we've had up to now, and we're going to be seeing more glimpses of it, glimpses of it as we go forward. And now I think we're going to be moving from uh, these kind of distressing examples to look at some more positive cases, how nonviolence did work, and uh, why that is the most useful thing to look at if we want to really understand what nonviolence is and if we want to join the experiment. Thank you very much. Till next time.